Uh, first of all, apologies for the rejigging of the program had to do with a bus that plowed into a pavement and injured a lot of people and caused traffic chaos and, and sort of left me stranded. Um, I have come with a paper called Exhausted Geographies. And um, it's very much focused um, on long-term conflict in the Middle East and its geographies because it's something that I am sort of compelled to return to um, again and again. And I think it's an effort, not an academic effort, uh, in terms of interdisciplinarity or in terms of, of you know, crossing the boundaries of, of, of disciplines. But I think it's an effort at sort of, of undoing geography as a disciplining force on the subject. So I'm, I'm sort of, of thinking about many sets of kind of, of disciplinings, of, of, of limitings that geography kind of, of forces on the subject. And that's, that's what I've been, been sort of playing around with. Now, I'm going to start with, in a way, three stories. And they're the three stories that kind of set up um, what, what I'm trying to explore, perhaps more um, theoretically. I've kind of lost the uh, line of division between theory and uh, narrative. It's kind of blurred on me um, in, in the last couple of years. And so I, I can't sort of, of, of make very clear distinctions. Now, cartography, I think, is an affect of geography. So rather than think of it as a tool, um, a sort of instrument, a language, which is, for me, the, the way I had been thinking um, about, about cartography for a long time, I think of it now um, as, as an affect of, of, of geography. For a long time, I understood cartography, um, I, I understood cartography as the possibilities for representation and counter-representation. So when we started talking about global counter-cartographies as a kind of thematic in our department at Goldsmiths, it was very much around the possibility of thinking, um, or the possibility of thinking counter-cartographies. And I'm not sure um, that I see it in that way any longer, because I think increasingly, I see that it is a kind of tripartite activity involving the activity of cartography is a tr kind of tripartite activity that in involves a situation, what Eyal Weizmann would call the facts on the ground. The effort to come to terms with that situation, which is the cartographic activity. <coughs> and finally, a, a third element, a slippery outcome that operates as an affective economy. And it's the slippery outcome, outcome that I'm totally fascinated by now, and my stories, as it were, have to do with that, because I don't quite understand what it is, but I understand the situation, and it's either kind of pinning down or unpinning and undoing and unframing through cartographic activity, which we thought was the story of cartography, is no longer the story of cartography. And this has to do with the fact that we think about performativity, we think about a lot of things, we think about affective regimes, affective economies, there, there are many elements that have kind of entered the frame. Um, in, in the past decade that need to be kind of incorporated into this. Um, as I said, I have three tales, um, all of which involve a hero and a struggle, uh, which is, is kind of important, I think, for narrative. Um, and all of which are linked to the geographies of long-term conflict, uh, which I'm trying to think about as exhausted geographies. The, the first tale has to do with um, a conference I attended in Jerusalem, which um, was a, a, um, a conference called City of Conflict, um, which was about the, the, the sort of urban situation of expanded Jerusalem, you know, that is half in the West Bank and half in the East Bank. And um, with Jadisa, who is the, I think, senior geographer 
of Palestine. He's a professor at Birzeit University. And he showed a series of maps that he had made of transportation routes on the West Bank. And as those of you who are slightly familiar with the situation in the West Bank will know, um, the, the Israeli occupation of the West Bank has created a series of blockages and stoppages throughout the terrain where checkpoints and the rerouting of transportation uh, vectors has created situations where a 20 minute journey between two villages can take you know, six hours or eight hours or require you know, moving around overnight. So there's, there's been um, a kind of transportation has become the exact opposite of what it was you know, within modernity meant to be, which is the swift passage from, from um, one point to the other, it's become a kind of, of, of performance of power, of the power of the Israeli army and, and the, the military regime of the occupation to um, not allow the movement of people uh, for work, for family, for the, the sort of their, their constant stories about people being kept at checkpoints, trying to get to hospital, women giving birth at checkpoints, etc. So transportation has been uh, accompanying that um, the the um, occupation has built a series of super highways that are operating as sort of transcendent highways, high highways that link um, the the settlements, the Israeli settlements on the West Bank. So there are also two registers of transportation. There's a kind of lower register with endless checkpoints and endless blockages, and then there's another register that kind of flies over the West Bank. And this also has to do with politics of invisibility. I mean, it's a very complex kind of strategy. So Jody Sach had made um, a series of maps, and these were the most crystalline maps I had ever seen in my life. One could have navigated by them in the middle of the night in the darkness. And what interested me about that situation was the kind of libidinal energy that was required to take, to turn the evil occupation, the kind of evil chaos of the occupation, into that level of crystalline clarity. And what that meant beyond cartography, what that meant beyond the kind of marking of the facts on the ground. In what way was this some kind of an invested practice? So this is, this is one story. 